So good morning, everybody. I hope you're still awake for the long presentation this morning. So my name is Sascha Duber. I'm solution architect at Red Hat Switzerland. And I'm going to speak with you today about uh, open hybrid cloud and developer agility. So we have today, companies has a lot of challenges today. So on one hand, we have the pressure from, from business. Business demands more and more services, react to new devices, new services, and internet coming out. So we have new technology, we have mobile services, we have tablets, we have internet of things is coming out. So companies have to be aware of that and they have to be right fast to market. So fast to market is a, a key word for that. So business demand that, fast development from new services be on a very flexible environment, and the environment needs to be open, no vendor lock-in, preferable, and even more business managers, they demand, they only want to pay for those services they really consume. They're not willing anymore to, to build a large IT infrastructure with a lot of hosts and uh, just to keep it here, so they only want to the, uh, pay for the, the resources, memory, CPU, storage, they really demand. On the other side, we have the development. Development feel the pressure from the, from the business, for sure, so they have to develop faster applications. In a couple of years ago, it was a common sense that you, have a, you needed weeks to just build up the development infrastructure. We have all the services intact, we get with version control and uh, uh, repositories, so it, it costs you a week till you can start programming. So this is gone for today. Today you need a uh, development environment on demand, just pushing a button. On the other hand, in the middle of the whole mess is the, the IT departments. The IT departments feel the, the pressure from, from the business, for sure. They feel the pressure from the development. And most companies in Switzerland and even in Europe or worldwide have to deal with less budget, so less money, and even less people to do the work. So with that reduced stuff, you have to build up all, all the requests from the business, from the development, and you have to cover new technology like cloud infrastructure. How are you going to do that all? How do you bring all that on the one hot, especially cloud infrastructure. Many people doesn't know what it actually means because everywhere, even every TV, every, every fridge or toaster has the label cloud on it. So what is the difference between a cloud infrastructure and the traditional virtualization everybody's using? The difference is the workload. On the left-hand side, we have traditional workload. Everybody knows that. This is some kind of virtualization infrastructure you have in every, you see in every company. We call that, that's VM hosting. Okay, if you deploy a new application, you want to have a new web server in your company, so you install just like a new Linux system, you configure an Apache web server on it, maybe you clone already the, the, from an image, to the system, you install the web application on it, you create some users, you deploy some SSH key that you can access on it. You manage some, implement some backup infrastructure, all that stuff. You add storage. So there's a lot of manual work you do here on that side. We already know infrastructure as a service, so automatic deploy VMs, but there's still a lot of manual work going on that. Even the applications, that web server you deploy in that VM, that does actually not scale. So if you have a higher demand, a higher load network, so the only way you can increase the, the resources is to add more CPUs and add more memory on that. Even redundancy is actually not given on the most web servers worldwide because the only thing is you depend on the, the hypervisor. So if you lose, if you use, a, a, if you lose. <laughs> a physical hypervisor machine, so you use a virtualization software like technologies like vMotion and replication that move you from application from one node to another. So actually, that's the good old word. And the cloud workloads, on the other hand, is completely a different approach, a different system behind. 
So we don't speak about VMs here. Well, for sure, at the end, we use some kind of uh, hypervisor technology as well, even there. But all we speak about here is we speak about the service. And the service is anything related to your application or your service you want to provide to your, application, uh, to your customers. And services, or this application you run on a cloud workload, are per design, they're actually designed to run on multiple instances, they scale. On the left-hand side, this is scale-up technology. This is scale-out technology. So usually you use here an application server technology like Chabos, and together with a load balancer that you have three, five, or ten instances of your application. I want to give you a more practical example about that, what I mean about the cloud thing. You all know Ticket Corner. Ticket Corner is that small company in Switzerland when you can order concert tickets. So my wife and me, we, we really love ACDC, and we try to get ACDC ticket. So who of you try to get ACDC ticket as well? No ACDC fan? Who, who got tickets, by the way? <laughs> the concert was last week. I wasn't able to, to manage some, to get some tickets. <laughs> so my, my wife, at the beginning of the year, when uh, the announcement was about to buy the kit, these tickets, my, my wife was quite ready. She, she, she prepared three laptops in a row, three laptops, and logged in at the page, the user account. And she was really ready. I got her on the phone. I have to work. And she was on the phone ready. Yeah, it, it just starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, Monday, so I'm ready to get in. And guess what happened? Nothing. The site was blocked. The site was completely overloaded. It was unable. And after a couple of minutes, about 25 minutes, still not able to log in, all tickets were gone. So I don't know actually this company Ticket Corner, but the only thing I know is I, that's I see an assumption. I guess this company is very small. There's maybe one, two web servers. This is a this is very fit, a good fit for concert information, like who's coming next, and a little bit of information about the actors. But dealing with 40,000 or 50,000 people that want to get tickets at the same time, one day in the morning, they cannot handle it. Well, actually, they don't need two web servers. They need about 50 or 60 web servers on that. Well, you can do that with traditional virtualization. You can do that. You, so you take a, make a template from a Red Hat Enterprise Linux, for instance. So you make a clone of them about 50 times. And then 50 times you install your application, 50 times you install your environment, user, all that stuff. Even better, these 50 machines you have to take care. You have to treat them. So even, even this month is no ticket sell, so you have to regularly monitor them, log in, check the log files to patch it, update it all the time. So it costs you a lot of money. Well, my assumption is this small company, Ticket Corner, they don't have the money to just provide, to, to buy uh, an, an administrator to keep uh, 50 machines, 60 machines on track. Well, by the way, VMware would love that solution. So if you have 70 VMs for that application, they, they really like to make an offer for you. <laughs> So how could this application, this ticket application, look like in a, in a real-world scenario? If I would be that company ticket corner, I would redesign my application cloud-ready. So I take an application server like JBoss that automatically scales, and I define my application. What do I need? I, I need somewhere a database. It's probably more on that environment. Database is more... Uh, more traditional workload, I need application servers, and, and that's the difference to virtualization. Because we don't speak about the VM. VM is only one part. To deploy a service, and maybe give an external, to give it to a cloud company, I need more. I need maybe a network as well. I need a network infrastructure, virtual software-defined network. I need a software-defined load balancer. Maybe in the backbone, I need a, a, a DMZ network or I need a VPN network, and I need some storage, scale-out storage, Ceph maybe, block storage, object storage, whatever. So cloud workload is all about infrastructure as a service, and infrastructure as a service is not like VMware wants to tell us deploying some new VMs. No, 
infrastructure services, I need to describe my application. What do I need? What are the dependencies? And if I know that, I can go to a cloud provider with that application. And one major difference is we work very strong with templates. So what we do is actually we make one major template where contain not only the operating system, so we can, it contains the application with anything you need on that and then single template. And if you have that together, you go to a cloud provider and with your described environment, network infrastructure, anything, and you go to a cloud provider and say, listen, that, that's my application. Okay? So uh, I need it next Monday morning at 8 o'clock. We probably start with about 20 maybe 30 instances of my application server and keep it running. And this cloud provider, he can take that whole package, anything is software defined for that tenant, together with a, he has a, a big infrastructure. And he can run that application and start it at Monday morning, 8 o'clock, 30 instances. And if you see, well, we have a higher demand, more than users than expected, so we just can add some nodes. So that's infrastructure as a service. And after these four hours, after these four hours, the ticket are sold, you stop the service. And that's the difference of that, because what you're doing is you clone all these instances from the single template. If you don't need that service anymore, anything, all the temporary images are gone. They are deleted. So nobody, nobody looks actually into one of these VMs. You design the VMs, or to the instances that the configuration is, when they boot up, the configuration will be done. So that's the major difference. And we compare that usually with, uh, maybe you heard that expression about the pets and cattle. Pets business is like, uh, on the left-hand side, virtualization. So you have a VM, you take care of that, you have to feed it every day. In, in technical terms, you have, to, you have to check the logs every day, you have to increase the file system, you have to install patches, you have to lifecycle it, all that stuff, that's pet business. On the other hand, that's cloud business. So you have a lot of cows, 200 cows, they do actually the same. So you're a farmer, you're, you're, you're dealing in managing this, this cattle. So if you, if you have to, to move the cattle up to the mountains, uh, and you lose one or two cows, that, well, that, that's bad, that's not good, but, but the whole cattle is still working. You know? That's the major difference in that. So now, how you can see that your application is ready for cloud computing. Typically, it is, if you have an application that already today scales on one virtual machine, so an Apache web server running on one virtual machine, so you're probably more on the traditional side. If you have already a life cycle of years, like a database, you don't install the database of <laughs> every day. So usually that's, that's a thing you, uh, for traditional workloads. You install it one time and you keep it alive as long as you can. Other thing is uh, like the SLA. So if your application cannot cover itself, so with additionally instances, some load balancing functionality, the same. On the other side, the cloud on the other side, workload is already per definition that your application scale on multiple instances. And in that case, it doesn't make a difference if it scales on a VM or on a container. We will hear more about that later on. The good thing on that is you don't have to decide. It is possible to use both. And we need that, we, we speak about that with a mixed or a hybrid environment. So it's possible that you design an application, the database on traditional workload, on the virtualization environment, or even physical hardware, that, that's fine. And the dynamic part, the application server, you design in the cloud platform. So there's a, a mix on that. So the most companies are seen are in the middle on the first two stage here. So this is between virtualization and some kind of uh, automatization, VM templating, somewhere in between. But the, the really goal is to go in a more, let's say, self-service, chargeback functionality. And self-service, I don't say, uh, I, I don't mean self-service, you log in and they give me two new VMs. No, self-service mean if you have a, an application like a web shop, and a webshop application you can use for multiple customers. 
or multiple proposals. So you have a, that web shop application, a self-service portal, and, and uh, customers, or even your internal IT can look into that self-server portal and say, deploy me that web shop application with my configuration. And another customer or another department can use the same application for a different purpose. Now, I, tell you, I want to tell you how to build such a, a cloud environment. What components we need to do that? So, anything starts with virtualization. Most companies already have that in-house. 90% it is uh, VMware in this case. So, that's a good start to build a cloud. The next what you need is, and this is a very important fact, even for the traditional workload, we don't speak about VM hosting, VM provisioning, everybody can do that. VM can, on VMware, you press the button and you get the new clone of a VM. But this is only 50% of the job, because somebody has to install the application, somebody has to add users, printers, backup, monitoring, all that stuff, and usually you are doing them manually. And that's the bad thing. Not that I don't believe you're not able to do it manually, but it's not reproducible. So if you lose that machine somewhere, or you have to life cycle it, you have to, to find out all the manual tasks you did. So what you need in that case is you need some kind of uh, system management, configuration management, configuration management like Puppet, you know, that you can automate tasks. Think about really the painful task like deploying SSH key. And a new user is coming in, you have to deploy on, on 200 VMs new SSH keys. You don't want to do that manually. That's a thing you can do with Puppet, for instance. At the same time with provisioning. You, the, the, most of, the most of you probably take, you have, you have a, a Windows template, you have a, a RHEL or CentOS, whatever kind of template, and you copy that every time. But that's a bad way to deploy new machines. Because think about it, if you install a, a database server, a database server needs a different partitioning table, it needs a different memory configuration, uh, uh, kernel configuration, whatever, than a web server. So the better way is to provision new machines in the right way. You kickstart them, even Windows. You kickstart Windows and you kickstart uh, Linux in the same way. You install it as you need it. Only with that software you really need it. Then think about it. If we install all the software, you have to patch all the software. If you configure a minimum machine, you only have to patch a minimum of that. So next step on that is, uh, there is for sure alternatives for, for virtualization environment, like Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, for instance, or Hyper-V, whatever. The next step you need on that is, you need some kind of cloud management. That's a very important fact, because if you want to deploy in your or ticket corner application on the service provider, you don't want that the company ticket corner is logging in in, logging in, in your environment and connect to your vCenter. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So you need a new abstraction layer of some kind with a self-service portal. So you have a self-service portal where you register your service. So you can say, for instance, a customer, this is your web shop. This is your, you can choose between the SLA you can choose about how many resources, the load you want to define, and this is the application you allow it to deploy instances of that application. And but you need more. You need uh, capacity planning. You need chargeback functionality. In this case of the ticket corner application, after this two-hour operation with 70 nodes, so you want to charge ticket corner for using that, and they want to get a bill, so they get yeah. It cost me about 6,000 bucks, whatever, to offer this two-hours operation. Even in, in your internal IT, if you want to have your own cloud environment for your company, you need some chargeback functionality, uh, functionality for your departments. So even more, uh, as well, is a, a resource capacity management. Even if you have your application, you see it, it gets overloaded over, over mid uh, uh, 12, 12 o'clock, we have uh, the double of the load every time has, everybody has time to do transactions or use your application. So you need an intelligence that automatically adds resources, add additional nodes to that. So that, that's the job of a, a cloud management uh, software. The next step is, sure, you have to cover the load, uh, the cloud workload. We can do that with uh, some kind of operate, uh, 
uh, with OpenStack, for instance. So this is application for they, they can burst like a Hadoop cluster. A Hadoop, a big data cluster. There are uh, companies uh, when you have a lot of calculations you have to do. Maybe you need a for only for three days you need a 300 node Hadoop cluster. Okay, then you need to self-service portal, press on it, deploy it on, on, on OpenStack, and you have that. If you don't need it anymore, you stop the service and all VMs are deleted. And the cluster, all the resources are free for another application you can use in that. The next step on that, all this combination of these both is already private cloud. You don't need that on the public side. You can use that on-premise. The next step is cloud brokering, so you have to do external service. We heard about a lot of uh, Amazon services. Well, Amazon has services as well with application, but the, the main business is VM hosting as well. And I, uh, uh, I know from a lot of companies, like developers, developer departments, they go directly to Amazon because it's much faster to deploy new VMs on Amazon than their own IT. This is a pretty bad <laughs> situation. And by the way, you don't want to have that uh, they buy the, the, these VMs on their credit card costs, you know, and expensive somehow, that cannot be. So you need a solution to integrate that. And a cloud management software needs to be able to, the credit card from the company, add these resources directly to Amazon, and you give the developer or this person need a VM, you give him the allowance. You are able to, if you need it, to get Amazon or Google, whatever, resources. So this framework, you need to combine, uh, com combine all that together. And this combination we call hybrid cloud. So from on-premise and public, uh, public cloud. And if it does rename that in, in products we have in Red Hat, otherwise I don't really show you that because we want to sell products for that. We have on the left-hand side for the cloud infrastructure management we have Red Hat Satellite. It is perfect. We have integrated Foreman. And we really work very close with the open source communities. So Foreman, uh, we have uh, our own uh, developers that work in the communities for deployment. So we cannot even deploy instances into uh, Red Hat virtualization or into uh, OpenStack. We can even deploy the infrastructure. We are able to deploy you OpenStack. We are able to deploy you Red Hat Enterprise virtualization additional hypervisor nodes. So we can deploy you the whole infrastructure. And for sure, we can patch it and maintain it on that part. Cloud Forms, on the other hand, is our cloud management platform. And this platform allows... Already? <laughs> I have 23 minutes. <laughs> This platform allows you to uh, manage this whole environment together. So on the next step, I will tell you what we all need to, to do to implement that. So we have uh, a platform as a service. This is where the software engineering, so where we de develop software. I'll tell you more about that later. We have infrastructure as a service, we have virtualization, and we have cloud management. If you see cloud management, I already told you a lot of them. So we have chargeback, cloud management functionality. This is a, already comes as an appliance. It doesn't have an agent you have to install. It is developed by the company uh, Managed IQ. It was a closed source company. Red Hat acquired that two years, two years back, and we made it open source now. So anything we do at Red Hat is open source. And this software can integrate uh, REST API, so we can deal with any other software or hardware equipment that supports REST API and can manage it. For instance, you can deploy a service of a self-service portal, including with uh, F5 load balancer rules and firewall rules. Or even if you want to deploy some blades, you can do that as well. So the next one is the integration of that. We can even integrate cloud forms in the ticketing system on the right side. So if you can make a ticket request, deploy me some new VMs or new application, you can integrate that with including approval process. And we can deal with, with HP, Cisco, and a lot of different vendors. Uh, on the, this side, our, this is our platform as a service platform. So for software development, so we uh, already support a lot of uh, applications, uh, uh, development languages. You see that better. And this portal is designed that you can write your code 
So you go in on premise, you're gonna, you run OpenShift, the software, on your local environment, so your developers can just log in and say, I want to do a JBoss application today. And within one button, so you just put the button, you have in two minutes a complete uh, a developer environment. So you have instances with JBoss installer, the right Java version, all together. And and you just can, uh, with Jenkins integration, with Maven integration, and Git repository, so within two minutes, you just can develop new software. And when you are ready, you can deploy it. And you can deploy it in an open stack, you can deploy it on the, as a container or an instance. You are free on that. Red Hat virtualization is our solution for uh, virtualization. It is comparable to VMware. We have more or less the same features to a much better price. So we can uh, support vMotion, storage migration, snapshot technology. And the good thing is, our software has this integration in software-defined network. The open vSwitch network we, we know from OpenStack is integrated in Red Hat virtualization. So it is possible to make the network, you span the network between virtualization and cloud platform together. To have a database here, for instance, and uh, an OpenStack, the application workload. Here, the, op uh, the OpenStack, I don't go in details on that. And important thing is software defined storage. So we have two products. We already have Cluster. Cluster is a project we use for, for many years. It is very good for, for file loads on so NFS and SIFs. With Cluster, you can make a storage cluster out of five nodes or ten nodes, it doesn't matter. The clue on that is there is no single point of failure, there's no master. And like in the NetApp, you have a master and a slave, or a CNO cluster, so when you lose the master, you have to fail over anything on the other location. With cluster, you don't have that. You theoretically can spawn a storage network around different cities, between Basel, Zurich, and Geneva. You can make a storage network with that. And you can, and while operating, add nodes to it, or remove nodes, with no single point of failure. And in addition to that, last year we acquired the, uh, acquired the, the company Ink Tank. This is the company that stands behind uh, uh, Ceph Enterprise. And this is a, a fantastic solution for uh, block and object storage. The biggest customer we have in Switzerland is the CERN. And CERN has about a, a free petabyte cluster built on this open source technology. So all that together you need to build uh, uh, software-defined data center. And now we come to containers. And containers, many, many other presenters already spoke a little bit about containers. And I want to tell you what is it about. Because what's cool on container, it's not just a hype. You know, container is something special. For sure, you can, compared to a, a, a virtualization platform, you can add uh, run much more, 10 times more container on the, on the same hardware than uh, virtual machines. But this is only a small benefit. Even the deployment as well, you can faster deploy, is a small benefit. The, the really reason we need container, and you have to do it, is I give you a real life example. I worked for a large bank, we had a lot of software engineers, and usually software engineers, I was one before, <laughs> my first life, you do, you, usually when you code, you take the latest and the coolest. So I would code in Java and Java 8 because it's there. If I now use Java 8, I don't have to migrate it, so I make my software. And if I do my software, I go then to operation, my friend in operation said, hey, here's that Java program, let it run. And they say, well, it's Java 8. We cannot handle that because we, we use Red Hat Enterprise Linux and it it's only has Java 7. I'm as a developer say, well, I don't care. Make it work. So install it manually, whatever you need to do. Okay. So it causes the operation guy a lot of work and install manually Java and configure it. So nothing with automatically deployment. And even worse, after one year, it gets even worse. Because after one year, there comes a, a Java, critical Java patch or shell shock, you know, or Harpley patch. And as a as an operator, you are not allowed actually just to install the patches because if you want to make your job right, you have to, to speak with the application. You have to speak with that guy that developed that application. And you have to call him and say, well, hey, do you remember last year you wrote that application? Uh, yeah, maybe, could be. 
Yeah, we, we need to patch it. So does the Java patch have an impact to the application? Uh, well, I don't know. In the meantime, I already have three new projects, and I have no time to deal with that, and maybe in one or two months, OK? So whatever we do in IT, it has a direct impact. So operation and development has an impact to each other. And the dependency, and, and this dependency counts a lot of works. And that's the reason we need containers. So what we, the, that's the idea to solve that problem. And what we want to do with container technology in Red Hat is we want to force people, we want to force developers that they're only able to certify, to develop certified application. We don't want to have in an enterprise company that, that, he, that the developer has the freedom to just use Java 8 or the latest Puppet version or the latest PHP version only if it is there. Because somebody needs to be to support that. It needs to be certified, it needs to be integrated. So what we want to do is with our software development, OpenShift, I told you before, we want to force developer to, to develop in a controlled environment. They still have the freedom to choose any programming language they want. They can choose the application server version. But if they choose a Jbox 6, for instance, we make sure he got the right Java version. We make sure he got the right kernel and the right operating system. We make sure that application is able to be supported. And if he do so, then he can, with this one-button push deployment, he can create an instance if he want, but as well, he can make a container on that. And if he does a container, is the container only have a minimal application, the library he needs, and the start and the stop scripts between. So we can develop and release independent from each other. And the difference on that is operation guy can patch their infrastructure and the developer can replace the whole container because the container will not be uh, uh, removed. So that's my second last slide. So what we do here is we combine that all together. We heard a little bit, uh, you heard about core OS. That's one way. We use atomic host. And Atomic Host is a, a minimized Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and he has all that features included, like Docker, and we have included Kubernetes, because we work very, very close together with the Google, and you need the container management. And now, all together, what we see in the beginning of my presentation, what we saw now with the container technology leads to that. And this is our vision we have at Red Hat. This is the most important slide we ha I have in my presentation. Because today, we have all that technology ready. We have physical machines. We have virtualization like VMware. We have Amazon Cloud. And we have uh, OpenStack for private cloud. But they have one problem. They cannot communicate with each other. Because if I make a VMware image, I cannot operate it in private cloud. And an Amazon image cannot be used somewhere else. So we have independent technologies. What we do is we contain, what we do is with Atomic, we make, we build a layer on top. So we put your Atomic on OpenStack, Atomic on virtualization, and even on Amazon Cloud, you already can order an Atomic host, a container host. And with all that together, you are able to run these containers wherever you want, and you can move it between that platforms. You can move one container if it is shipped to Amazon if you want to. And that's the big benefits on that. Thank you very much.